Hi everyone, it's Diana Layton, youth librarian from the Mark Emily Turner Memorial Library in Prescott, Maine, here to present my July team book talk. And this month we're going to be looking at The Warrior Heir by Cinda Williams Chima. And the reason why we're talking about this book in particular is because on July 22nd the library hosted a virtual visit with, si with Cinda uh, using Skype and two projectors and two laptops and lots of cords and special funding from the Maine Humanities Council. And uh, it was a really great experience. Uh, Cinda covered the publishing industry and how she was inspired to write her books and uh, provided some advice for students in our summer creative writing workshop that we also hosted. And it was just really fantastic. So if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, or on the library's team blog. If you look around here, there should be a link on how to host a Skype author visit in your community, whether it's a library or school or somewhere completely different. And definitely, if you have the ability, I really encourage you to do so. It's just a really fantastic experience for patrons or students. And uh, moving on to the Warrior Air. It's time to judge a book by its cover, and as we can see, definitely a fantasy book. And when we start with the prologue, we're thrown into this experience of wizard battles and being introduced to, kind of, to these wizard houses and, you know, just all of this sheer craziness. But then we move on to the next chapter, and it's a bit of a different experience. Um, even though the prologue takes place in Ohio, now we're in contemporary Ohio, and just every type of mundane thing that you can think of, and we're introduced to Jack, who's a typical American teenager grappling with girls, including his ex-girlfriend, and maintaining his grades, and trying to get on the school soccer team, and everything else. And um, it's a much different experience. But one thing that we notice about Jack is that there's definitely something mysterious about him, um, including the fact that he has to take this medication every day uh, per his mother's orders. And one day, early in the book, he actually forgets to do so. So what's going to happen? Well, we notice that Jack's mental and physical abilities just go out of this world. And it's to the point where... It really is out of this world. Like, um, it's definitely almost supernatural. So we start wondering, who is Jack? And who are the people around Jack, especially his Aunt Linda, who's also pretty mysterious and seems to have trouble following her wherever she goes? Well, not surprisingly, as we move through the book, we discover that Jack is, in fact, the warrior heir. And these warriors are set up to fight battles um, to the death, you know, brawls that really determine power and, um, amongst the wizard houses and which house is going to maintain power at any given time. But they're to the death type matches, so there aren't a lot of these warriors left. So Jack is a rare commodity, but he's also a dangerous commodity. Um, so we kind of follow Jack as he realizes who he is and then has to move forward to realize his full potential. Now, you might say, look, I read the Harry Potter books, I understand wizards, and I don't really want to read another book about wizards, but Cinda pointed out in her virtual visit that although there's plenty to be said about Harry Potter and everything else, there's something about having a wizard experience at an American high school, just your average public school, and the fact that Jack still has to grapple with, you know, maintaining his grades and taking tests and playing soccer and everything else. Not that Harry didn't have to deal with a lot of that as well, but he also has to make sure that, you know, he kind of keeps this a secret. So there's this whole tension about who Jack is and how he's able to kind of maintain this secret. And at the same time, you know, we know what his purpose is, and 
how is he going to deal with this? Is he going to be able to, you know, win the battle? Who is he even going to be fighting against? So for those readers who, like myself, don't typically read books about wizards, that conflict element, which almost reminded me of The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins in a certain kind of way, um, is also pretty compelling. And it, it just sort of makes the book read more like a contemporary thriller in a lot of ways. If you're the type who likes wizards but don't want a contemporary thriller and don't want a public school in the mix, then it's important to note that Cinda also has written another wizard series called The Seven Realms, which is more classic high fantasy, right out the chute. It's a totally imagined world, um, and so, you know, that might be something that you'd like to look at. And I'm going to leave it at that for this month, and I will see you guys next month. Bye!